Now, thousands of police officers are continuing a manhunt for the convict who dramatically escaped from a French prison. The charred remains of a helicopter which picked up Redouane Faid from within the prison grounds have been taken for investigation. He had been serving a 25-year sentence for armed robbery and murder and had escaped prison before. Now, there are now questions about whether drones were used to help him. He was transferred for judicial reasons. Whilst he was away, there were no drones. When he came back, the drones returned. This would imply that the drones were there for him. And uh, joining me now by a Skype from Belfast is the former governor and director from the Northern Ireland Prison Service, Max Murray. Thank you very much, Max, for joining us today. This must have Good been morning. a pretty sophisticated escape. How much help do you think a Faid would have had to pull this off? Well, there's no question this was a well-planned, well-organized, well-resourced uh, and very well-executed escape. And uh, without doubt, uh, he would have had sufficient um, funding to be able to support the escape, but also he would have had quite significant support from other fellow criminals. All right. And, you know, he this is not the first time that he's done it before. Probably he did get a lot of support. What kind of precautions should have been perhaps in place, knowing that he's tried this before? One would, whenever is a person is committed to prison, one of the first things that is done is a security risk assessment. And that would look at the, the individual's criminal history, look at the nature of the recent offending, look at the propensity to violence and harm. It would look at his ability to plan an escape and more particularly look at the level of danger that that individual would present to the public if he were to escape. In this instance, I would be amazed if this person was not assessed as top security. The previous escape was in uh, 2013. It's not that long ago. Uh, and he should have been under a security regime that ensured that there was maximum physical security, maximum procedure security, and staff who were uh, looking after him were trained uh, to look out for issues around conditioning, issues uh, uh, around preventing the person from uh, uh, planning any escape like this. So that would include monitoring visits, monitoring phone calls. So you would expect there would be a significant infrastructure, security infrastructure, uh, that this individual would be subject to. And indeed, you talk about risk assessment, looking at what is around, what could potentially uh, help an escape like this. And now we have the presence of drones. I mean, this probably should be factored yes. into risk assessment, shouldn't it? Well, there's no question about that. I mean, drones are now a problem in, in many, many jurisdictions. Uh, a lot of contraband is uh, trafficked into prisons now using drones, where drones will uh, um, drop uh, drugs into prisons. Uh, drones will also use to, to film and photograph flying over prisons. So drones are not unusual. Uh, there are two major weaknesses now that, that prisons have to combat. One is drones, but the other is accessible to accessibility to mobile phones. So no question that this person would have had a mobile phone. He would have had immediate communication with those people who were helping him on the outside. Uh, uh, and he would be able to plan virtually uh, without any interruption or without any real problems. All right. Thank you for your insight there. Max Murray, the former governor and director from the Northern Ireland Prison Service. Thanks.